Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode. Hey everybody, so today I wanted to talk about um, using DACMX on Compact Rio. Um, so the goals would be to discuss the differences between the different uh, programming modes you can use on CRIO, um, discuss which targets can use DACMX, and some of the pros and cons, and also we'll do a quick review of DACMX, not anything super in-depth, but um, if you uh, are somewhat aware with DACMX, this should be a good uh, refresher, but um, yeah. So first off, what is a C-RIO or Compact RIO? So this is a National Instruments uh, embedded controller. So what you get is you have an RT processor. So this is, this is basically a uh, your computer, right? It has an operating system, a file system, all that stuff. Um, depending on the model of C-RIO that you get, um, these run different operating systems. Um, the most modern ones all run uh, NI Linux RT which is a special flavor of Linux that NI has kind of taken and, and modified. Um, uh, there are some that are like VXWorks or, or Farlap, um, but uh, yeah, all the newer ones are the NI Linux RT. Um, and this has you know different peripherals depending on the model you buy. So some have RS-232, RS-45 ports, multiple Ethernet adapters, some have EtherCAT slave ports, some have you know, different amounts of USB ports um, of different kinds. So um, the, the model will change kind of what you get on here. <clears throat> you also have this uh, FPGA and backplane. So this is where you're going to be connecting your cards to. Um, and then there is a, a fully reconfigurable FPGA that you can program directly, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, and then you have your I.O. modules. So these are just the NI C-Series cards that you can use with like CDAC as well. Um, so these are these give you the ability to do different analog or digital I/O um, measure temperature, you know, all pressure, all sorts of stuff. So um, <clears throat> your RT processor. So as I mentioned, um, these are the RT stands for real time, uh, meaning that it's very deterministic. Um, so much better than like if you try to program something on like a Windows computer and you tell it, hey, do something every, you know, five milliseconds, you know, you're really five milliseconds plus or minus, you know, uh, a good chunk and, and that, and it may not even be consistent, right? You may have periods of time where you're five milliseconds plus or minus, you know, a couple microseconds and then all of a sudden, you know, Windows could decide to do a security scan and it could totally change everything. So um, these give you good reliability in terms of timing. Um, and in terms of jitter, um, it allows for microsecond decision making, so you can make decisions very quickly. Um, if you build in like a control system or something into this, um, it can be very responsive. Um, it has volatile and non-volatile memory, um, and these allow for USB devices, serial, dual Ethernet, triggering, etc. So there's a whole bunch of peripherals, as I mentioned, um, on board. Um, the FPGA and backplane, this is where you get true parallelism, so you can have separate um, tasks running on the FPGA, um, and they can be totally parallel and truly parallel, not sharing, you know, processors and whatnot like you would on, like, a computer or your RT processor. Um, this allows for nanosecond decision-making, so much faster than your processor can process things. Um, and th that's because this is all actually handled on hardware. There's no operating system that's making decisions and, you know, whatnot. It's all uh, decided on the hardware. Um, you get extreme reliability, um, very high speed acquisition rates, and you can do additional signal processing and analysis on the FPGA. So you can program in, you know, math and, you know, analysis and whatnot right onto the FPGA, and you don't have to uh, make that take place on the processor and consume CPU. Um, your I.O. modules, um, nothing crazy here, and I just offers a whole bunch of different modules, and you can basically pick the ones you need that match the devices you need to connect to. Um, so in programming, 
these compact reels, you basically have three options. You have real time, which is NI DACMX, which is the newest. Um, you have real time scan, which uh, we'll talk about, and LabVIEW FPJ. Um, so real time NI DACMX is what we're focusing on in this. Um, so this is the exact same API you use if you're working with other NI DAC devices. So if you've ever worked with um, CDAC, it's the exact same functions or the NI USB DACs, um, you know, it's all these same couple functions um, that you see right here in this palette. And they're all pretty simple and pretty intuitive. Um, you know, really, you, you can do, you know, just these functions you see right here, but, you know, between like create channel, read, write, you know, timing, triggering, start, stop, clear. Those functions do pretty much everything you will need to do for, you know, probably 90, 95 plus percent of all DAC applications. You can accomplish just with these functions. There are some additional advanced functions and whatnot, but these work for almost everything. Um, on a C Rio, you can also make this execute deterministic control up to five kilohertz running on the real time processor. Um, but yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about this. First, we want to just look at the other programming methods real quick. Um, so there is a real time scan. So this is going to be your ability to access single point IO. Um, it, it, de it basically deploys a predefined FPGA behavior to the FPGA that allows uh, data to be communicated back up to the RT processor. Um, if you look on this block diagram, this is actually a hybrid example, which I'll talk about what hybrid means. Um, but you have this temp1, um, which is a scan, uh, the real-time scan mode um, IO, where we're just basically reading that value back into the RT processor. And then here, this e-stop is also real-time scan where um, if these conditions are met, we're writing a true back to um, this digital output. Um, and so this allows real-time control up to one kilohertz. Um, so it's slower than DACMX, but it's very simple. Um, basically, in your project, right, your cards that are set up for real-time scan mode are going to show up here with all of their channels, and you can just drag and drop them, and it automatically sets them up for the right data types and whatnot. So LabVIEW FPGA is going to be the most powerful programming method available on these. So it works with single point data, but you can get high speed control up to tens of megahertz. So uh, basically your only limitation is the actual hardware you're, you're integrating with. Um, you can create custom protocols and you can do all this um, IO and processing separate from the real time controller. Um, as I mentioned, this is the most powerful way you can leverage these devices, but it's also the not that it's complicated, but it is the hardest of the three. DACMX is pretty simple, and real-time scan is incredibly simple. Um, this one, there's a little bit more of a learning curve to understanding how to work with some of the uniqueness of FPJ. Um, but once you understand it, this is by far um, going to be the most capable way you can handle programming these devices. So to select a programming mode, um, we can just go to DACMX, or to NI Max, um, and open remote systems, find our device we want to connect to, and we can go select our modules under devices and interfaces. And there's a programming mode dropdown where it will list what programming modes are supported on that device. And we can just go select the one that we want. So whether that's StackMX or whatever. Um, so, and then when you're done, it'll just have you save the configuration to the device. So it's, it's pretty simple. Um, so why would you want to use DACMX? Um, a, because this is a very familiar API for most LabVIEW programmers. So if you've already been programming in LabVIEW, and maybe you haven't necessarily done much embedded programming, but if you've worked with their DAC devices, you already know how to use DACMX. So there's really no learning curve to getting that up and running. Um, you also can have a separate hardware timing engine for each serial slot. And so this allows you to have different cards in your um, compact Rio running at different rates. Whereas if you're using like scan mode, for example, um, your scan engine runs at like a fixed frequency that's applied globally to all of the modules you might have connected. Whereas with this, you can have separate hardware timing engines on each card and they can each run at the rate that they need to run at. Um, so this allows for control rates up to five kilohertz on the 9040 series controllers and 2.5 kilohertz on the 9050 series controllers. 
Um, you also can process data separate from the real-time controller, so you can build that into your tests. Um, and hardware time single point acquisition can ensure that your reads and writes happen fast enough without even needing a buffer. So um, we'll look at what that looks like. Um, so hardware time single point. So this is something that um, typically you're not really going to use on like a Windows based system, but it makes a lot of sense on Compact Rio. Um, and basically, um, you know, we're creating a channel. So we're defining what channels on the DAC hardware we actually are using. And then when we use this timing VI, we are going to uh, specify hardware timed single point and the rate at which we want that happen. So now um, we're going to run this task on the hardware clock um, at whatever frequency we've, we've specified. And we're going to get a point of data every iteration of that clock. Um, and you can see here we've taken that sample clock and we've also tied it into our clock for our analog output. So now both of this analog input and analog output are running on the same clock. And now each iteration of this cycle, we can read a sample and we can write a sample, um, but we can do so quickly and without even needing to deal with buffers and whatnot. Um, so DACMX is supported on all of the 9040 and 9050 series C Rios. Um, those are the two right now that do support DACMX. So um, if, you're, if you have like a 9030 series or something, um, unfortunately you can't use DACMX, um, but yeah, the newer ones, the 9040, 9050 do. And on the NI website, if you look at this programming methods section, you can see it will list NI DACMX if you're curious if a device does support it or not. So first, um, just kind of demoing use of this we're going to create a project and then we're going to go and select a new target and device um, once we're there we can select either an existing target to configure one that's you know already connected to our network or to our computer um, or we can select a new target or device if we want to set everything up programming wise but ne don't necessarily have the hardware connected at the moment um, and you'll need to go down and select the specific model that you are programming um, then your project will look like this. Um, it will, if you're um, programming a device that you are connected to, it will automatically detect what modules are in that device at the moment. Um, if you've selected a new target, so you're not actually connected to it, you'll need to right click on either real time resources or real time scan and add a module by its specific uh, part number. Um, but if you are connected, it'll automatically discover the modules that are in there and they'll show up in your project like that. Um, next, we can add a new VI under our RT target. And this is where we're gonna do our DACMX programming. Um, so now we're gonna use the palette, uh, the DACMX palette, just like we would if we were programming a DAC device or any other um, DACMX compatible component. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is create a virtual channel. So this is where we're gonna specify um, which channels, channel or channels we're reading data from and some of the options on that task. So so we can configure stuff like uh, limits, um, you know, so some devices will have multi-range ADCs and we can use that to basically tell it um, which ADC to use, um, different configurations of how things could be wired up. So this is where we're going to configure just how our task, w what data are we reading. Um, we've then got our timing function where we can specify basically a rate and the mode of reading data we want to use. So continuous samples, hardware time single point, finite samples, etc. Um, we've got a DACMX read and this is where we're going to actually read data in, um, either a single point on a single channel, multiple channels, etc. So we can kind of customize that how we want to read data. And it's all just kind of handled through these drop downs. It's all polymorphic. Um, when we're done reading data, we're just going to close the task. Pretty simple. And we can run that code and we get data back off of our C Rio. So it's relatively simple. Um, um, one thing I wanted to highlight just before we close is that. Um, Compact Rio does support hybrid mode, which means you can run different modules in different programming modes. So this example here is using FPGA and real-time, 
um, you can do the same thing with Dactamex as well. That way you can kind of get the best of both worlds and use what works best for any given module. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in.